Well, good evening, Nos Wonky here. Well, this is going to be my thoughts on the on the whole fat, fat Aussie bastard matter. I'm going to try to do this with as few edits as possible, which is unusual for me. But I'm ready from some notes, so I remember what to say. Well, first of all, look. Um, Thanks to everyone again who has sent me messages of support and also to the people who've subscribed to me in the last couple of days. It's been, uh, you know, I, ha I hadn't expected to get a lot of new subscribers. Um, so thanks to everyone who, who has subscribed. Now, I don't normally get involved in YouTube drama. I, I always stay silent when there's any any YouTube drama, but obviously in this case uh, it's a bit different because I'm, I'm already involved. So I have decided to make this video. So uh, first I'll just talk a bit about my, my thoughts on, on Pete's uh, apology and the events since the news broke the other day. The apology, you know, I think it's good that he did that. Um, I don't know myself how to or what to make of it, whether whether it was genuine or not. But um, it was better than nothing. It's a start, and. Yeah, as I said, it's better that he did that. And, but what I will say is that I think it came too late. I think it came, well, obviously it should have come months before that, but um, given that it was going to be up after the news broke, I think the apology should have been the first thing that he posted. Uh, and it should have been before or instead of the Today Tonight story. Now, my interpretation of that apology is that he is essentially admitting that what he said in the Today Tonight story about expenses and, uh, and then distributing cash to the homeless was, was bullshit. That's how I interpret it. I, I think some people um, have interpreted it differently that that he's still sticking by that story uh, I didn't see it that way I thought he was backing backing away from that and saying you know admitting that that was not true and that's good um, now I'm not going to say too much more about that um, you know I don't want to throw any more shit at Pete because you know he's getting quite enough from everyone else um, but what I will do is uh, in the rest of this video I want to fill you in on some of the detail um, and answer some of the questions that I've received there have been questions on on Facebook and on YouTube comments and in PMs to me. Some of them are just about, you know, I think, I think in some cases people have just, because they've just got their, the story from the news media, they're not, they don't really understand everything about it. And I'll fill in some of that detail, at least what I know. Um, but also, some people have, you know, it's only a small number, but some people have um, accused me of being involved in some kind of scam with Pete. Um, so I'll, I'll answer those accusations as well. But um, So look, one question that um, has come up is how, how did he get caught? And, how did it end up in court? Well, my understanding is that 
someone did what I should have done, and that is um, to contact the hospital and say, did you receive this, this donation? And um, the hospital then made a complaint to the Queensland Office of Fair Trading. For those of you who, who don't know, the, the Office of Fair Trading is the um, government body that, uh, I guess they regulate uh, businesses and, and charities and things like that to make sure they, they're complying with the law. And so the hospital made a complaint. And so uh, in February this year, I, was, I received an email from the Office of Fair Trading um, and they were asking me if I was the person who, who bought the tooth in a charity auction. And I said I was, of course, and they asked me to call them back. So I called them and that's when they told me that the, the hospital had not received the money. So although I had heard accusations about this before, um, that was the first time I heard it from a, well, I guess an official source. And so, you know, I felt, I felt pretty disappointed at that time. A lot of people have, have uh, messaged me saying, you must, you must have felt pretty bad when all this came out. But I mean, really, I had those feelings back in February and uh, it was really all that time That was a difficult time. That was, you know, it, it was frustrating. Um, you know, I was asked not to talk about it, of course. And it was frustrating waiting such a long time for it to um, go to court and to be resolved. So when it finally was, I, I actually felt relieved that it was all over. Um, that said, you know, the last couple of days have been a bit hectic, um, feeling so many messages, and but you know it's generally been positive. Now, okay, so I was, as I said, they they told me this uh, information, and they asked me a lot of questions uh, about how I became involved. How I knew Pete, uh, why I bought the tooth, and did I really pay that money? Now, this is one of the the areas where some people have suggested that uh, I was involved in some kind of scam. That maybe it was a, just a scam between me and Pete. And there was no money ever changed hands, and that we just did it to um, get subscribers and views. Well, of course, one of the first questions they asked me was, did you really pay this money and can you prove it? And uh, a lot of people think that I paid by check. Of course, uh, we made that video in which I signed a check and handed it to Pete, or handed it to the fat Aussie bastard, in fact. But of course, that was just a skit that we did for YouTube. Um, that was a couple of weeks after the auction. Uh, I had actually already paid by electronic transfer a couple of weeks before, like almost this, I think it was the same day that uh, the, the bidding finished. Um, and so I provided them with that receipt and they never questioned that. If they had any doubts about it, they could have checked with the bank with my bank and with Pete's bank and uh, I'm sure they would have been able to access the bank records. So there was never any question that money was handed over. Now look people have said you know why did I not pay it directly to the charity? Yes well in hindsight that's what I should have done isn't it but you know when you buy something in an auction, you're buying a thing. Uh, it's to raise money for charity, but you're buying the item from the seller. Um, you know, when people 
uh, charity collectors approach you in the streets selling badges and wristbands or whatever to raise money for whatever charity uh, you don't uh, and the, you know they say would you like to buy one of these you don't say yes I'll buy it uh, but I won't give you the money I'll give it to the charity directly no you, you give them the money and they give you the item and then you know they pass it on to the charity so at the time I didn't th you know it didn't occur to me that there was anything wrong with that with with just giving him the money um, because I had the full expectation uh, that and you know he had said that that the handover of the money would be filmed he later said I wanted to uh, to shoot some video handing over a check and all this sort of thing and uh, we just weren't allowed to do that and by then it was you know already too late I guess to to do anything about it okay so getting back to the the um, investigation as I said um, they asked me a lot of questions uh, this was you know, you know it was not a person-to-person -person interview uh, they asked me some questions on the phone and then said we'd like you to answer these in writing uh, which I did this was all done by email and they then put those answers together into one document which became a witness statement uh, and asked me to print that out well I, I went through it and made sure it was all accurate and in my own words uh, made, a few, made a few changes and um, they asked me to sign that and send it back to them so that was to be used as evidence in court um, now obviously I didn't have any direct knowledge that Pete had done anything wrong so you know the only information I could give them really was uh, about how I came to be involved and um, obviously the the bidding process on eBay uh, yeah that they asked me for the eBay emails showing you know, every time you make a bid on eBay they send you an email so they wanted all those emails and um, yeah and just the the receipt for the for the uh, money that I sent. Now, why did I buy the tooth? Um, it wasn't entirely for the charity. You know, I would not have made a donation. I don't. You know, there's very few people who would make simply make a donation like that to a charity uh, out of the blue. You know, obviously, it was partly a fun thing to do to be involved in. Um, and of course I did it to promote my channel as well so I wouldn't have done it if uh, it was just like, like just a donation and I wouldn't have done it if it was just to promote my channel you know I wouldn't spend that much money just to promote my channel uh, if it wasn't going to a good cause as well so yeah it's a combination of things you know, I, I have, to a degree, selfish motives as well, you know, but, as I said, it, um, it seemed like a good cause, and, um, yeah, it was a, it was a fun thing to be involved in at the time. And look, everyone at the time, almost all the messages, I think I only got one negative message um, in the wake of that auction. Uh, I got I got so many messages saying that it was great, and nobody, absolutely nobody, you know, sent me a message saying, "Be careful, this might be a scam." Um, it's all very well to to look back on it and say you should have been more careful. But, you know, there was none of that at the time. There was no suggestion. And so many people um, believed him and, and with the IGA thing after that as well. Um, 
lots of people donated to that and I've I've spoken to some of the people who've donated and they they're wondering what happened to their money as well. Now um, as I said I sent off my witness statement and then at some point it was early June I think they called me and said uh, well back up a little bit um, they told me that they would be interviewing Pete so you know they asked me these questions first and they said at the time look we don't know if he's done anything wrong when we talk to him he might have a perfectly reasonable explanation and um, so as I said I had no direct knowledge that he'd done anything wrong either um, so at some point uh, it must have been April or May I'm not sure um, they told me that they had interviewed him well they you know, I think uh, we, we were talking about about the statement and I asked them have you interviewed him yet and they said yes uh, but they would not tell me what he had said obviously um, so, yeah, I had no idea what his response was to these allegations. Uh, and then in early June, uh, they told me that the matter would go to court. And he was being charged with two offences. And um, those offences are uh, breaches of the, the Collections Act 1966 for the legally minded among you. Uh, that's a Queensland state piece of legislation. So in, in layman's terms, section 10 basically says that you can't, um, you can't ask for money on behalf of a charity unless you're properly authorised. Um, and that's what Pete was talking about in, in the Today Tonight story when he said um, I'm not a registered charity and he didn't know I didn't know that I had to be a registered charity well I don't think you have to be a registered charity but you have to be properly authorized to collect money on behalf of a charity and I can understand that yeah you know, it's not obvious <clears throat> it's not obvious uh, that that's illegal to us you know to collect money to give to a charity um, because yeah, it seems like you're doing a good thing, right? But obviously, it, yeah, and I didn't, it didn't occur to me that that would be illegal. <clears throat> but thinking about it, it, it's obvious why it's illegal. It's because that is open to abuse. Anyone could just uh, ask people for money saying that it was going to charity, um, and it's not, which is what happened in this case. <clears throat> So that was Section 10 of uh, the Collections Act. I, I think the maximum penalty for that is, is not, not uh, very severe. I should have looked it up. But um, the other one, the other charge was Section 39 of the Collections Act, which basically says if you collect money for a charity um, and then you don't give it to that charity, that's an offence. And um, the maximum penalty for that is five years jail. So that's a fairly serious one, and um, I guess Pete's quite lucky to, to only get six months uh, suspended. Okay, so they told me I was going to go to court in July. They didn't tell me the date. I, I didn't know exactly when it would go to court, but I knew it would be in July. Um, and yeah, so on Wednesday afternoon, they called me and said they'd just come out of court and, uh, told me the outcome, um, and that they would be doing a media release. Now I'll put a link to the media release, <coughs> um, and really the, um, you know, the Brisbane Times article, uh, sorry, the Korea Mail article. Uh, 
It's basically just taken straight from the press release. Uh, now look, I've been asked why I deleted my last video. Um, not my last one, the one before that in which uh, I met uh, one of Fab's fans on the street. Uh, I deleted that because I was asked to delete it by, by someone involved. Um, and yeah, because they didn't want to be associated with Pete anymore. Uh, now, why did I put that video up, given that I, I knew that this was coming? Uh, look, from February onwards, from when I first heard about this, I stopped commenting on Pete's vids. I, I th really thought, well, they advised me to, to not have any contact with him. Um, but at the same time, I wanted to act as if I didn't know anything, you know. I wanted, wanted to make it seem that everything was normal to him. <clears throat> and um, a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was, he commented on one of my videos and <clears throat> asked me whether, um, oh, he said, you haven't been commenting on my videos. What, what's wrong? You know, is there something wrong? And I felt like saying, well, I think you know what's wrong. But, you know, I didn't want to post something like that publicly. So I, I just replied, no, there's nothing wrong or you know, towards that effect. And I had shot that video that very day, actually. Um, I met this guy in the street who was a, a fan of uh, Fat Aussie Bastard. So when I was shooting the video, I was thinking, you know, I'll just shoot it. He, he wants me to shoot this video. Um, and I'll decide what to do about it later. And then I got that comment from Pete. And I thought, well, okay. To make make things look like I'm, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong. I might as well post that video, which I, I really shouldn't have. Now that I think about it, because um, I guess it was potentially embarrassing to the guy involved. So. Uh, I apologise to him for that, but yeah, I was just trying to keep the appearance of uh, there being, you know, that nothing was happening, like Pete was. I mean, you know, he was just carrying on as if there was nothing wrong. Another thing that I've seen in, in several comments is that um, I should sue Pete, or people have asked me if I'm going to sue him to get the money back. Well. No, because the money is going to go back to the hospital. Now, that that's part of the um, the court uh, order as a result of the uh, the resolution in court. Now, he's not going to pay that money directly to the hospital. I, I asked them about this specifically, and they have told me that. Uh, the State Penalties Enforcement Registry, the SPER, um, which I, yeah, I guess that's a Queensland thing. That is the government body that, uh, I guess, collects penalties, um, financial penalties, uh, I guess when you get a, a speeding fine or something like that, they are the people who come after you to get the money. So he will be paying it to them and they will pass it on to the hospital. Uh, now, if he fails to do that, then you know, he'll, I guess he'll be back in court. So um, getting the money back from Pete is, is not on the agenda at all because it will end up going to the hospital as was originally intended. I think that's it. I think that's all there is to say. Well, there you have it. The tooth.